Welcome back to the WIA Bracket Reveal Show for the Boys Basketball Tournament. Well, Division 4 certainly shaping up to be a competitive one as we jump right back into the bracket. So let's kick off D4 with Unity as a number one seed. They'll play either Cumberland or Grantsburg. Webster hosts Shatek Weyerhaeuser and Lady Smith comes in at number four against Kadat. On the opposite side, we've got Spring Valley awaiting the winner of McDonald Catholic and Boyceville. Cameron is the two seed. They'll host either Shell Lake or Colfax. The next of D4, Durand, Arkansas comes in at number one. They'll get either Bangor or Whitehall. Osseo Fairchild and Mondovi will go head to head in the five against 12. Winner moves on to face number four, Fall Creek. Aquinas, they get the three seed and will take on either Regis or Augusta. And number seven, Nielsville and Melrose Mindoro square off number, or number two, Luther, will await that winner. In the other sectional two bracket, we have Marathon as a number one seed. They play the winner of Colby and Crandon. Fourth seeded Stratford awaits the winner of Washburn and Abbotsford. On the other side is the three seed Edgar Schwamagon host Iola Scandinavia. Then it's Phillips against Spencer to see who gets to play second seeded Auburndale. Number one, Bon Duell will take on either number eight, Valders, or number nine, Manawa. And then number five, Shiocton, or number 12, Mishicot, will battle to face number four, Trevitt. Then number three, Kiwani, will either await number six, Ancanto or number 11, Coleman, rounding out the sectional portion. It's St. Mary Catholic, that's named the number two seed. Then why we go at number seven, Fremont, and at number 10, Algama will go head to head from there. Well, the top team in Division Four is Marathon, according to the Wiz Sports ranking. We just revealed them as a number one seed. WAOW sports director Keegan Hewitt caught up with coach Adam Jacobson about their postseason potential. I'm here at Marathon High School with Coach Adam Jacobson. Coach, thanks so much for joining us. As your team heads into the postseason as one of those top ranked top threats in D4, what's kind of the mindset for your team rolling in? Yeah, you know, you're, you you want to put yourself in a position to you know host as many home games as you can and, and you know have your body of work prepare you for the postseason, which I think it has. And now we just have to go out there and and, and you know play our best when it matters most. You know, when it comes in. Um, you know, when the playoff comes, you know, and if we happen to have a bye and, um, you know, a team's already won a playoff game coming into our place. So, yeah, I just have to take it, uh, you know, day by day, improve and, and be the best version of ourselves at that time. It's, it's obvious you have a special player like Grant War and the size, the stature, the ability to score. But I would say from watching you guys all year, it's the four guys around him, no matter who's coming off the bench. How much does that help to have guys that know where to be, to work the space and to work around him kind of propel the success? Yeah, obviously Grant's a tremendous player. Um, you know, has been a big leader of our, our program for a number of years. But I, I agree with you, our balance, we've had six different guys lead us in scoring at some point throughout the year. Uh, we're a very willing and able passing team. We share the ball. Our kids really take pride in making the extra pass. And uh, I, I hope that helps us along the road, you know, because you never know what happens gonna, in a playoff game. But the ability to, to, to be balanced, the ability to share the basketball, I hope will help us in the long run. And last one for you, Coach. Kind of what are your expectations or, or what are the goals for this team? Obviously, it's, it's to raise a gold ball. But in that, what are you kind of hoping for out of your guys as you move forward in the most critical month of the season? Yeah, I think you just have to trust your preparation, trust that what you put into it. And, and, and we just we said, you know, I know there's a lot of external factors and things like that, but becoming the best we are capable of becoming, you know, and, and playing our best when it matters most. And sometimes you do and it still doesn't work out, but knowing that we did all we could to become the best we are capable of becoming, and, and that's all we can do, and hopefully that it is, it is enough in March. Awesome, and thank you, Coach. Best of luck moving forward. We'll send it back to you guys in studio. All right, thank you so much, Keegan. Well, Luke, let's uh, not waste any more time and jump into sectional three of Division Four. We start with the top seed in this sectional. It's the Mineral Point Pointers. They're going to take on either number nine, Riverdale, or number eight, Iowa Grant. And moving down, it's number five, Lancaster, and number 12, Fenimore. They will face off, or they will face off. Then number four, Cuba City will go at it with number 13, Parkville. Then we've got number three, Belleville, awaiting number 11, Boscobel, at number six, or facing number six, West By. Then number seven, Broadhead, will face off with number 10, Wisconsin Heights, and the winner will draw number two, Darlington. All right, let's go to the next bracket. Hardyville earns the top seed in our next bracket. They'll face either Poinette or Nakusa. Marshall plays host to Nasita. That winner moves on to a matchup with fourth seed at Cambridge. Deerfield gets a bye as the three seed and will play Princeton, Green Lake, or Montello. On the bottom half, it's Randolph with the bye playing either Waterloo or Westville. Okay, Mark, coming back out here, 
Darlington is the team right behind Marathon right now, second in the rankings. What stands out about them? What kind of potential do they have? Well, they, they've had two really great games with Mineral Point this year in the Swall, and uh, both teams are really, really good. You know, as far as Darlington goes, they they have some experience and they have some youth, and they're they're really well coached. Coach Upton always does a really good job. You know, with uh, with Brady Boucher on the on the perimeter as a sophomore, and then uh, Murray inside with his size at six seven, his ability to score in different ways and just alter block shots and rebound. Um, they're they're really solid. So. Uh, you know, I, I anticipate uh, it's going to be one of those two probably heading to uh, the All right, uh, well, let's keep it rolling here. All right, well, we have top-seeded Kohler. They'll get either St. Mary's Springs or Dodgeland in the regional title. Horicon and Random Lake will face off. Winner takes on Manitow Manitowoc. Rather. Luther, will, who earned the four seed, Howard's Grove comes in at number three. They'll get the victor of Roncalli or Marquezan. Number seven, Laconia, and number 10, Cedar Grove, Belgium, go head-to-head. -head. Winner moves on to face number two, Shipwick and Lutheran. All right, keeping it rolling here, Milwaukee Juno gets a bye as the top seed. They'll host the winner of Living Word Lutheran and Kenosha Christian Life. Milwaukee Lifelong Learning matches up with Racine Lutheran. On the other side, we have Kenosha St. Joseph's as the three seed. They await the winner of Prairie School and Williams Bay. Destiny and St. John's match up in the 7-10 game. The winner of that moves on to play Heritage Christian. And Mineral Point is another team that stands out in Division 4. The Pointers sitting at 21-1 while being one of the top teams in the Swall Conference. That's so lost coming from Darlington and head coach Dan Burrison counting his blessings though as the program retained eight guys from the class of 2024. Burrison says it's hard to find a group who loves the game more than this one. I think they're just excited to come to practice every day and I think that's been the key to you know to what we've been able to accomplish so far. I mean it's a group of guys that get along really well together you know so I just think the fact that uh, they get along well good on and off the court uh, and I'm just excited to get to practice every day and get better and, you know, still focused on the regular season here at this point in time. And then after next week, we'll start to get ready for the tournament. Such an exciting team turning defense on offense, too. Just had to say that real quick. For sure. Well, we've seen the full D4 bracket now, Mark. Uh, what stands out from this one? What are you looking forward to most? Well, when you start talking about D4 and D5, you, you talk about those teams that play up during the regular season like Kenosha St. Joe's, they made it all the way to the championship game. That You know, they're a three seed, they probably have seven or eight losses, but their schedule, Thomas Moore twice, Dominican twice, St. Catharines twice. They played Milwaukee Academy of Science. So you're gonna lose a few of those, but uh, that that's a team I think to keep an eye on. Uh, obviously the, the winner of uh, Darlington Mineral Point. And, you know, I really like the marathon team. I, I um, you know, they're just, uh, they have a difference maker. You know, 6'10", six, six, uh, guy that can score inside and outside. And Grant Warren, you know, he can run the floor, he can block shots, um, and not a lot of D4 teams have a 6'10 kid uh, <laughs> that can do all those things, you know, and, and he's going to Michigan Tech on a D2 scholarship next year, and for good reason, because he's a very good player. Well, four divisions down and one to go. We're going to hear from some of the top teams in Division 5. That's all coming up next. <laughs> 